Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is part four of Marcel's lot, the big job lot of stuff I got from the Netherlands, all consoles and stuff. So I've already done the PS1s in part one, I did the PS2 in part two and I did the PSPs in part three. So this is going to be part four and we're going to be doing the PlayStation 3s. I don't know whether it's going to be a one-parter or a two-parter, it depends on how long it takes to fix. Now I've tried to fix PSP, the, the fat version, sorry, the PS3s, the fat version on my uh, channel before, I had three of them. And two of them had, I think it was either the red light of death or the yellow light of death, something like that, and they weren't repairable. These ones here are very common to have that problem. I've never done one of these before, so this is a PS3 uh, Slim. So uh, out of both of them, I would prefer to get this one working if possible, because I do already have a PS3 Fat. Now this one is not the backwards compatible one, unfortunately. This thing here doesn't lift up. I'm just going to quickly show you the model numbers on the bottom, because I know a lot of you will be interested. And I'm going to show you the little stickers on there to say, uh, you know, to see what's wrong with them. So this is the model number here, CECH2504B. I I don't know if this is like an early PS3 Slim or a later one, I'm not too sure. After this came the PSP3, sorry, the PS3 Super Slim. I keep saying PSP. Right, here we go. This is this one here. So this is a CECHG04. Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure what gigabyte one this is actually. And luckily it's still got all the stickers intact so it looks like i'm going to be the first one into this one let's have a look at this one yeah and again okay it's peeled at the corner but that's it so again i'm the first one to look at these so for me that's very good now it says on here remember this is in dutch because it's from the netherlands and i've typed that into my phone and i believe that one says does not display and this one here if you recognize the last two words are the same as the last one and this one says no display yeah okay so basically it looks like they are both not displaying can you see that end words the same so let's start with the PSP slim and then we'll move on to this one here so with it now I uh, I've got the power leads and I've got the AV lead so let's plug it in and see what's happening So with these ones, they both take AV leads, so like composite and also HDMI as well. Right, let's just turn on the TV to the correct channel. I'm going to go to side AV because that's where it goes into. Right, so that's that there. Let's turn this on and see what happens. So we've got a red light, we've got a green light. So far, so good. I can make I can hear it making a slight noise that might be the fan well okay but nothing is displaying on screen it just says no video available now I just want to see there was controllers in the pack I'm getting really low on mini USB cables. I've got this one here, but I'm not sure if this is going to be working on all the pins or not. So let's see if it does sync up. It might be just like a charging cable working on two pins. Yes, it does. Okay, well, hold on, let's unplug that. Right, but that's fair enough, because I suppose the batteries are going to be completely flat, but so that means the console is on, doesn't it? So this could be a problem with the uh, display. Hold on, does display, what? hold on a minute. No, that would be HDMI. Do you know what? Let's, uh, before I move on to this one here, I'm gonna try it on HDMI because I'm thinking that realistically, the PS3, uh, PS3 Slim would be working on HDMI. So let's plug it into HDMI and see what happens. I'm not gonna turn it off, I'm just gonna do it when it's, uh, when it's live. I'm just gonna plug this into my TV. Right, I've got it plugged into HDMI 2. 
go to here, HMI 2. <laughs> there we go. Right. So, there isn't a display problem. It's just that the last person was using it on HDMI and it's working. The last person was using it on HDMI and uh, maybe when they got rid of it, they just got rid of it with the AV cable because I suppose the AV cable was no good to them because they can reuse the HDMI. Excellent. Right, well I'm not going to go into massive detail because it says, you know, no display and there is a display. So now what I'm going to do is, from memory, I, I presume it's the same on all the PS3, uh, PS3 uh, whether it's the fat, slim or super slim, I'm pretty sure when you turn it on to begin with you can just hold down the power button and then it brings you a menu up where you can swap AV to HDMI or vice versa or I think it might just put it in its lowest resolution to AV so if this was to happen to for example uh, you know somebody again if they didn't have a AV if they didn't have a HDMI cable what do they do so I'll tell you what we're going to do let's put it back to AV because we can see that it is working here so let's put it back to AV now and let's pretend we didn't have a HDMI cable and let's see if it is fixable. So we're going to unplug the HDMI cable and what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the power button to turn it off and then when we turn it on I'm going to physically hold it down and I think from memory that's how you get it to work on AV. Right okay so you can see the red light now so now I'm going to hold it down I'm going to keep holding it until it beeps again There we go, now I'm going to let go, and now let's see if it does anything. I'm not sure if I have to hold it for another beep on top of that, I've kind of forgotten. There we go. So, you see, it's, uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this console at all. Now it's working on AV, so the, uh, the quality is not going to be as good. One second. AV. I'm not sure if this comes up with what it's working on. No, my other TV used to say what resolution it was. Yeah, there you go. But you can see it's not as uh, the resolution is not as nice. And now let's just hit this button here. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so if you ever get a PS3 and it's not working, just hold down that power button and then it will save you messing around with the leads because if the last person had it on HDMI expects it, expects it to be on HDMI again, not on AV. So there we go, look, that appears to be working fine. Obviously I can go across everything in my own time. Let's just plug in a disc and see if the disc is re recognised. Appears to be reading it. There we go. Yeah, it's recognised there. Okay, so this is definitely not going to be a two-parter. Let's get on to the fat version and see what's happening with this. I'm just going to shut this down. Right, okay, so I'm so happy that that's working now because I've got another, I think I've got another two of these that need looking at. And when you're an amateur like myself, it's so much easier when you've got a working one because it's nice and easy to swap parts around because for me it's very hard to fault find when you know when you've got something broken and you haven't got a second one to, to compare to then uh, for me it's near enough impossible unless it's something really obvious right this has got a different power thing here so let me just see if there was one of those in the pack right there's not but I've got one from my soldering station so I can just use that for testing so with this one now I'm gonna plug in uh, thinking should I plug in both no I'll just do one at a time I think let's go with the AV because that's what it came with so this is how it would have been tested now that's there I'm just going to swap the TV to AV All right side AV All right let's see what's happening now so we're plugged in we have got nothing there let's turn it on at the back All right we've got a little red light there Good, it turns on. I can hear the fan. No, that's not good. Right, I remember that from one of my other ones, the flashing red light of death. 
which a lot of people thought was just overheating. But think about it, how could it overheat so quickly? Let's say if it was dry thermal paste or blocked fence. In fact, let's have a look around. Does it look dusty? No, not particularly. No, it wouldn't overheat that quick, would it? So, let's try that again. Can you see it tries to turn on, it goes to the blue light for a second and then it does a quick flash of orange and then goes to flashing red. So watch this, green, blue, orange, flashing red. Right, okay, uh, normally I wouldn't even bother entertaining this because it uh, normally means those two chips inside, the big ones like the DPU and also the GPU, the graphics one, it's something to do with where they use lead free solder and then the balls have dried and cracked and uh, they're not making the contact anymore. But I remember when I did the last one of these, I had messages saying that it wasn't necessarily to do with that, that it could be to do with capacitors. And I remember reading a, a Reddit thing on it. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of research now just to uh, see, see what's, uh, see, I need to jog my memory about what it was about because it was quite a while ago. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick fan test. So to do a fan test, we hold it off at the back and this will also blow out any rubbish if it's in there as well. So we're gonna hold down the eject button and I'm gonna turn it on at the back. And let's, uh, there we go. Can you hear now? So that's basically blowing it all out at full speed. So you can see how clean it is. There's nothing shooting out there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if there's any disc in here. Sometime, there you go, I've got a disc. Battlefield, Bad Company 2. Probably not a rare one, but still, that's a bonus. So uh, that's also how you can get stuck discs out of this one here as well, because there's no physical hole for you to like put a paper clip into. Well, let's just turn that on again now. See if it's made any difference, which it's not gonna have. Okay, it's still just flashing slowly. Turn it off. Let me see if it turns on with the disc. No, same thing. Right, okay, let me do a little bit of research online and then uh, we'll see what we can do with this. But if you're thinking you're gonna see a fix, I think it's highly unlikely, because I know before I tried heating it up and stuff and uh, heating up those chips. And as well as that, when you start reading into it more and also all the comments I got, apparently there are any short-term fixes unless it could be this capacitor issue. So let me do a bit of research into that first. I forgot to mention, just in case you're curious, it's got nothing to do with the AV side of things, so we're not even getting that far. So even if I was to plug a HDMI cable into it, it's still gonna do exactly the same thing. Yeah, okay, so it's got nothing to do with that. Right, I'm just gonna do a bit of research. Right, so I was looking back at my part three video and there's quite a few comments in here. I believe there's comments in the part two as well. And if you go up to this Reddit here, you can see uh, yellow light, a deaf conclusion, capacitors are the problem, not the GPU. And there's a whole heap of information going all the way down here. Interestingly though, it also links to another page that said it's a load of rubbish that you need to reball the GPU, which I think is the RSX chip. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I've got nothing really to lose, have I? So let's take it apart. I mean, it might not even be that at all. It might become obvious when I take it apart, but this is something that I've never tried before. So personally, I would like to have a look at these capacitors and see if anything can be done about it. So let's start taking this PS3 apart and uh, let's see if we can find out what it could be. Right, so this is unplugged from the power supply now. Now, when I said uh, not backwards compatible, all PlayStation 3s are backwards compatible with PlayStation 1 games, but only certain ones are with the PlayStation 2 games. And I believe the best ones are the ones where you can lift up the flap here. So they're like the most expensive ones. So now let's start here. Now, when I was looking back at the comments on that one, it did say that you can remove this sticker without having the, the void thing by taking off this rubber foot thing here. So let's see if that's going to work. Well, not for me, didn't you can still see the void there. Not that it matters. Right, let's uh, use a Torx bit in there. Let's have a look at 
look at the hard drive. Okay, so this is a 40 gigabyte one. Right, that all looks nice and clean. Can't see anything obviously wrong with that. So let's take it apart further. I remember this from last time, so all of the screws are long, but this one here is shorter, but they even put an S here to make it easier for you, and they point to all the screws as well. So it's, uh, it's a really nicely put together console. Right, okay, so once you've undone the screws, there's just a little catch here that you just need to push in, and then it levers up that way. It's all very clean so far. Very, 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 look at this. Looks amazing. Right, so this is the disk drive this side here. I'm just going to leave that plugged in for a moment. I just want to double check because it did say online that sometimes a faulty power supply can cause this. So let's just make sure that, uh, let's have a look at the power supply side of things. Right, so this is a power supply here. It's a 220 volt to 240 volt in, and it's 12 volt and 5 volt out. 12 volt, 23.5 amps, and 5 volt is 0.6 amps. So I think what I might do is, uh, I wonder how I can measure this. So I presume these two are going to be the 12 volt, and this is going to be the uh, this is going to be the 5 volt. I think that's probably what's going to happen. Uh, see, what we can probably do is we could, like the PlayStation 4, we can probably short out some pins here to be able to see then if we can get the 12 volts and the 5 volts. But what I might do just for ease is take out one of these from a faulty PlayStation 3 that I have and see if it's the same. DC output, if it is, pop it in here and then I'll know whether 100% it's the power supply or not. Well, I'm just going to see if this one has the same power supply. Right, well this number here is the same. The bottom number anyway, 1474074411 4740711 and the output is 12 volts, 23.5 amps and 5 volts, 0.6 amps. So, okay, and the model numbers here as well. LSE, you see just up here. LSEB 1226B1. Okay, so they're the same, so fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this power supply on my one. This one here. This is just so clean, unbelievably clean. And we'll see if it's made any difference at all. Let's plug it in and see if it's made any difference. All right, so turn it on at the back. Again, we've got the red light here. No, exactly the same. So 100% it's not the power supply, unless of course it is the power supply that's faulty, but that's highly unlikely. Do you know what I did forget to do? I forgot to put the hard drive in, uh, but that doesn't look like it actually makes any, uh, any difference. But let's pop it in just to see. There we go. And let's try that again. No, exactly the same as before. So I'm pretty confident that that's not the problem. Right, and just purely accuracy, I'm gonna put the hard drive from the faulty PlayStation 3 from uh, months and months ago in here, just to see if that makes any difference at all. 
I know it's not the one for here, but I'm thinking it should still turn on and do something. No, again, flashing red light. Right, so I don't believe it's the hard drive or the power supply. Let's get down to this board. And I'm just going to make sure that I put the correct hard drive back in. Well, actually, I can just leave that unplugged, can't I? Right, so I'm just going to dismantle this further now. So there's a little bit of dust down here, but it's in very, very good condition. Right, so these are the capacitors here, these ones here. And I mean, they do look discoloured, but I wonder if there's a way to test them. Because I'm not really used to capacitors like this. Looks like they've got four contacts down the bottom and four contacts up the top. So I think on that forum it did say that you need four smaller capacitors for each one, but I'd really need to look at the pictures more carefully. I wonder if you were to go between each of the pads here on the ESR. I mean, I don't know what's negative and positive. I mean, would it make a difference if I just did them all the same way, got a reading maybe? It might bring up one or two that are faulty, possibly. Right, the board's not wanting to come out. I can't remember from memory how you get the board out. I wonder, do I have to disconnect more? Okay, it was just a the thermal place holding it in there. Uh, holding it into, uh, you know, basically sticking it to this. Well, okay, it's dried, but it's not really, really crusty. You can see there, it's still, still got a bit of softness to it. So I don't know whether, I mean, we know it's not really a thermal, but I'm not saying that the thermal paste is helping, but it's not a thermal paste issue, because otherwise it would at least stay on for a little while. Right, so here are these capacitors. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight of them. Do you know what? I might as well take these off because otherwise they're just going to keep falling off. These are just little thermal pads. I must remember to put them back on. So they go onto these ones here. These things that say I, I, R. Don't know what they are. Right, so I'm going to just mess around for the moment just looking at these to see whether any of them read anything different when I just do a, uh, I'm just going to put my meter across them, then I might do a ESR across them, and then if I find anything, of course, I'll let you know. As far as I can see, they're just shortened everywhere, so if I was to put one leg to ground on continuity, you can see every single pad is just shorting. So, uh, and I've just done an ohms test between them, just purely out of curiosity, just to see if they look anything different. So, I don't really see the point of doing an ESR, because it, Normally, if a capacitor is both short into ground, then there's an issue. But uh, these are all short into ground, so I'm wondering what the pads are like on the inside. So now, this is the graphics chip here. Now, I could, in theory, just put some pressure on that, because that's what a lot of the fixes are, literally putting some washers underneath here to put some more pressure onto here, because if, for example, it's unleaded solder and there's a crack ball here, by putting more pressure down, then it will work. But what I would like to do is, because I think the odds of getting this fixed are very slim, I do want to see the pads underneath here so I can try to work out how this works. I mean, I don't know whether the, the pads go right the way across because there is continuity there. 
But then there's continuity there. Basically, there's just continuity everywhere. So are these just all the earth pads? And maybe the other pads are in the middle? I don't know. So I want to take one of these off just to see. Now on that Reddit forum, I'm pretty sure it was the ones under the RSX chip, the graphics chip, which is this one here. Now I haven't cleaned it up, but if you have a look here, you can just slightly make out, not sure if you can or not, some markings. But basically this one says, sell something or other. So I'm pretty sure that this one is the uh, RS, RSX. I can't be bothered to clean it up at the moment, if I'm honest with you. But I'm going to pop off one of these just to see what it looks like underneath. So I'm just going to put a little bit of flux around, get the hot air on it, pull it off, and then uh, I'll have a better idea of what's going on. All right, so let's start on this one here. I'm just going to put a little bit of flux not really sure if the flux is going to make any difference here because I suppose a bit will work its way into the uh, into the middle so what I'm thinking is there's going to be more pads in the middle which are going to be like the uh, other side of the the other leg of the capacitors really I don't want flux anywhere else apart from around here this is all tiny capacitors everywhere around here and I don't want to be lifting any of them Right, I've got my temperature set to 400 degrees Celsius and I've got the airflow 4 out of 5. I've got my extraction fan on as well. There goes the lid. Mm, right, the lid's come off. Let's see if I can get the actual body off. No. No, what's happening is I'm just burning the lids. No. Wow, they're uh, they're pretty hard to get off. I'm not sure if I should persevere or not because, well, mind you, it doesn't work anyway, does it? And I'm not going to be reboarding it. I'm going to put the air. I'm going to put my temperature right up to 480, and I'm put my airflow six out of eight. Might as well take that lid off because I don't think it's going to be protecting much from the inside anyway.
No wall I can smell is burning. This is not coming off whatsoever. No, nothing's happening there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add leaded solder to it to try and bring down the temperature. Put a bit of leaded solder on, I don't know if that's going to make any difference or not. Yeah, so the solder's not even melting, you see. I've got my temperature up full, that's 480 degrees Celsius, and I've got airflow 8 out of 8 now. This board must be very good at taking away all the heat. Right, okay, so the leaded solder's now melted there. And up there as well. There we go, right, I'm just going to start prising underneath it. There's no way this will be able to be used again. No, okay, well it's completely ruined. I just want to get it off now, just to see what the pads look like underneath. Right, okay, so that is off, and that really didn't go to plan whatsoever. So basically, it looks like there's just one rail going right the way across, and again there, and again there, and again there. So I'm just going to check now with my meter, just, to, just against ground, just to see what's happening. Right, so they're all short into ground. So this is where I'm completely lost about how. Uh, I need to look at the pictures online because I don't quite understand if these are both going to ground. Where are you supposed to put these new capacitors?
Well, look, so that's made up of many different layers. Can you see there all the different layers going across? Yeah, there they all are. Well, I'll be back in a, a few minutes. I just want to have a look online, see how it's been arranged. Right, so this is a website here, psxplace.com, and that's the rest of it along there. But if you Google it, you'll uh, you'll find it anyway. But if you have a look here, it looks like the top one and the bottom one are positive, and then that one there and that one there. Because remember, there was four lines. So the top and bottom line are positive, and then the other two are negative. And you can see how they've arranged the capacitors here at uh, at an angle like this. Now they're all talking about using the tantalum. It keeps doing that for some reason. The tantalum uh, capacitors. Now I haven't got any of them. Yes, I can order them up. I'm just wondering what would happen if you were to use electrolytic because in this little pack here I have got 470 microfarad one. Now it doesn't matter that they're 25 volts. I think the ones on here were supposed to be 6 volts. But uh, that's fine. I'm tempted to just put these in because, you know, obviously I know what's negative and positive on here just to see what happens. And then if it was possibly even just to maybe turn on just for a few more seconds, then I might know that it is a problem with the capacitors and then I could order some of these up. I'm really tempted to do that. OK, brave or stupid, I don't know, but I'm going to go for it. Why not? In the uh, the purpose of learning, I'm going to give it a go because I was reading up. Basically, the tantalum, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, are just they just pack a lot more punch for a smaller size. So I think they're very similar to electrolytic, but you can get a lot more capacitance in a much much smaller uh, package. So obviously these are going to be ridiculous on here. They're going to be far too big. But I just want to put it back together, even without any heat sinks or anything on it, just to see if it's going to last longer than that turning on for not even one second. It only went to kind of that blue colour for about half a second. So let's give it a go. So with this one, obviously, the line here is the negative side. So we're going to be putting the negative like that there. So I think I'm just going to leave these really long just for the uh, just for the time being, because then it means I can hopefully reuse these again. Now, if I end up breaking something, the way I look at it is the chances of me getting this working are pretty slim. I said after doing the last PS3 that I would never be touching them again if they had these issues because to me it's just a big waste of time and most of the comments also said that as well. But since then a lot of infos come out about these capacitors. So that's why I want to do it, just to, just to see what's going to happen. Right, OK, completely ridiculous, I know, but let's just see if it's going to turn on. So now I'm just wondering how I'm going to get this back together. Okay, so if you have a look, I managed to get them into the hole there, and none of them are actually hitting the edges. So, uh, yeah, I think I will be sort of partially be able to get this back together. Right, OK, I've got it back together enough to test, so I'm just going to plug it in. I'm going to be really careful now of where I put my hands. I'm just going to turn it on at the back here. Now, what I've done is I've got the drive here up 
over those capacitors because obviously I don't want to rest it on the capacitors. Now let me zoom into this light here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it where the camera is. Okay, let me rearrange the camera because there is a red light down here now. Right, so here we go. Now I'm not sure if it's going to work by just tapping my finger on it. So let's see. Yes, green light. Still a green light. Unbelievable. It's still a green light and there's flashing going on down here. I don't know what that's about. What? Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Let's plug in, let's plug in the HDMI cable into the TV and see if we have any, uh, see if we have any picture. I didn't, I didn't think that would work. I really didn't think that would work. I hope I don't cause any problem because they're electrolytic. But that says to me now that it's worth buying those uh, those ones because I didn't really add enough heat to the board. I didn't add enough heat to the board to do the, uh, you know, to reflow anything, did I? Because I was just purely over those uh, capacitors. In hindsight, what I should have done is I should have just applied heat to one capacitor at a time just to see if that would have made any difference. Right, I'm on HDMI 2. Let's see if I can plug this in. I don't really want to touch anything at the back here. Uh, hold on now, let's try to lift this up. Remember this is all exposed. Right, I'm in, I'm in. Here we go, look. Yes, it's there. Let's turn off some lights. Oh my God, right, let's plug in the controller and let's see if we can, uh, let's see what's happening. Unbelievable. Let's get to a USB port. And uh, yeah, let's hit the button. Yes, that's synced up. Wow, what is this? So it's in, okay, it's in some weird four by three. Let, let me change the, let me change it over to English. So what do I need to go to, video? Hold on. System update, no. Music. That must be it, mustn't it? Yes, there we go. Netherlands, change that to English. Right, now let's see if we can change the settings to make it widescreen. Right, okay, uh, not quite sure why it seems to be, oh sorry, it's not what, sorry, it's just a picture in the middle, I mean that is an amazing picture. Uh, it's, uh, if you have a look up the top, the date and stuff is, is on the actual widescreen part itself. Amazing. So there you go, look at that there. Let's pop a disc in and uh, see if it's going to read that. So I might as well try this Battlefield, bad company one. Right, I took it in. Yeah, there it is. Wow. So what I need to do now is I need to order up some of these tantalum capacitors. I think it's supposed to be six volts. It doesn't really matter about the volts, does it? But it, they need to be 470 microfarad each. Uh, the ones I've put in at the moment are 25 volts, but I think the ones they recommended was six volts. And I think what I'm going to do is... Uh, I think... 
Let me have a think now. Uh, should I do, should I leave it at that or should I do more? Maybe I should just do both of those ones for the graphics chips uh, because they're next to each other and I think it'd be quite easy one to do. And I think I'm going to leave the other six, but then if it's a hard one to use because the thing is I've got a PSP uh, super slim. So the thing is like maybe if this was to be used for like 10 hours then maybe the other ones would need changing as well because I know normally with capacitors it's good to change all of them but I'm not 100% sure because the ones on the other side where the actual chips are then on those ones it needs to, do you know what, I better turn this one off because this is probably an 18 but you can see it's working there right let's just go back to home there we go uh, yeah the uh, the the, the ones on the other side, apparently you need to put some link cable in there or something. So that, that I'm not too sure about. Maybe I should order up just eight tantalums and just do the two chips on the RSX. I think that's what I'm going to do. So, uh, I think for this part of the video, I think I'm going to leave it. And then I think what I'll do is when I get those ones through, I can do a revisit one and then show you, it, you, know, show you how to solder them in and stuff like that. But basically all I'm going to be doing is putting the let me put that mute. All I'm going to be doing is putting them at an angle to get the positive and the negative because you know I presume they're going to be about so big. Do you know what? I'm absolutely amazed by that, and I'm kind of thinking now about the other two PlayStations. I need to watch back the videos. I know one of them I heated up those two chips, and I think from memory solder balls fell out of one, so that's going to be not repairable now. But maybe on the other one it might well be repairable. What I'm thinking is, you know the backwards compatible one, that was the one I think I did in part two of the trying to fix video before. Maybe that could also be a capacitor problem. That is amazing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit up this video and release it, because I think a lot of people are gonna be interested in that. As well as that, uh, well saying that, I was gonna say about the elect uh, electrolytic and tantalum, but it doesn't really make a difference because I can't put the electrolytic ones in there because as you can see, the covers, they're too big. Do you see what I mean? I'm not gonna be able to get the disc in their place, hence the reason why I need to use the tantalum ones, just to make them nice and small. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, well, well happy with this. So I'm going to order them up now. I'm not sure how long they're going to take to arrive, but that will be on the part two version of this video. So thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for Marcel for sending them over. It's so nice to work on stuff that hasn't been worked on before. So although this one, if I hadn't have read about that capacitor thing, I would have said is unfixable. It was still nice to be the first person in here. And as well, everything I've got from him so far really doesn't look to be abused. It just looks to be, look at it. I mean, it looks pretty much immaculate. So that's that's really good because stuff I normally buy from eBay and stuff, a lot of it can be really ropey. No, not, not, not a lot, you know, some of it can be really ropey. So uh, yeah, and look at that, it's still going. It hasn't overheated as of yet. And remember, that's still with the old thermal paste. What a result, just, just fantastic. So uh, yeah, that is it. I will uh, see you in part two of this video or depending on how long the things arrive, I might be able to get another China Fix video done before that. Take care, see you later.